Hey guys, welcome to today's video. Today we're taking a look at another foundation, a foundation I really actually wasn't planning on looking at, um, but there's not much out right now. There's literally nothing coming out right now that I'm interested in, and this was something I wasn't interested in either, but decided to go ahead with it, and uh, that is Clinique's Even Better Clinical Foundation, and I am giving the concealer go as well and staring at it now I'm thinking this is really light. So first let me tell you a little bit about me. I'm 58. My skin is not oily but it's not dry per se. It's not flaky but it is on the edge of being dry so I'm no longer producing the oils that younger skin produces. The hyaluronic acid, the collagen, the elastin, all the goodies that younger skin produces very efficiently becomes less efficient as you get older and that's where I am. So I use a lot of hydrating products. I use several essences and two moisturizers and I use a moisturizing sunscreen and that's where we are right now. Let me tell you a little bit about this product. Even Better Clinical Serum Foundation. It is said to be long wear and oil free is something that is very high up there in what they're marketing. But on the Sephora site, it says it's for every skin type, oily, combo, dry. And this always kind of makes me roll my eyes a little bit because there's no planet on which someone with dry skin can wear the same products as someone with oily skin. They just have different concerns. So that kind of set off an alarm for me. I don't always look at all the ingredients, but in this case, I am. So, here are the ingredients. <laughs> See how the screen just uh, rebalanced? That's nice. And I've highlighted things that are concerning to me. And things that aren't concerning to me, okay? So, it starts with dimethicone. There's a ton of different kinds of dimethicones in here. The first thing I see that I think is, is interesting is alcohol denat. Now, alcohol denat is the drying kind of alcohol. There are fatty alcohols, but this isn't one of them. Usually, alcohol denat in, it's cloudy today, so the light is going in and out. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, in something like MAC Face and Body, Pat McGrath, the Dior Face and Body, the denat's pretty high up. It's like in the top five, and that is oftentimes used in foundations to help speed the drying process. This isn't quite that high. It's more like part of the formula. I'm not a chemist, but I don't like the placement of this, and I don't actually like the ingredient at all. And then we have sodium hyaluronate, uh, not quite in the middle, a little bit above the middle. Tocopherol, which is a vitamin E. And then we have laminaria saccharina extract. I'm not wearing my glasses, so I'm not sure about these words, but I did look that up. And this is supposed to be soothing, but at the same time, it is lipid reducing. So lipids are part of your barrier. And it's a decongestant, i.e. if you are oily and have congested skin, that's a good ingredient for you. So two things right there that if you have dry skin or even combo skin, probably not great. We have Berberis vulgaris extract, which is anti-acne. Uh, camellia leaf extract, which is green tea, that's good for you. Salvia hispanica seed extract, which is moisturizing. Caffeine niacinamide, salicylic acid. I know it, but I don't know it because I don't need it. So salicylic acid is something that goes into the pores and pushes out oil, debris, congestion. It's best used for people who have oily, congested, or acneic skin. So I don't touch that one. Linoleic acid, which is an omega-6. I can't find it here. Oh, molasses extract. That's a precursor to an AAH because AA, certain AHAs are derived from sugar and molasses is a sugar. So it's a precursor. And tocopherol. And way at the bottom there's citric acid and I don't love that either. 
So those are the ingredients and already I'm thinking, mm, let's talk about the colors. I went on the Clinique side, I went on the Sephora side, I tried to do a match, use that match tool in Sephora and nothing came up. I don't know if the tool is broken. The last couple of times I tried to use it, it was blank, but I couldn't find something to match two of my foundations that I feel match me the best. So I went into store and <laughs> wearing my mask, I did a little patch test here with one color, here with one color. I tried linen, which is CN08, and I tried ivory, which is CN28. So O and 2. There's something in the middle with a 1 on it. But what's most interesting to me is every single color starts with a CN or a WN. Cool, neutral, or warm, neutral. There are not any neutrals in here. Now I have yellow undertones. But it's very hard to tell. You might be able to tell right here on my neck where there's no redness, there's a little bit of yellow there. But most foundations don't do a little bit of yellow. They do an egregious amount of yellow. So I prefer to do something neutral. And they just don't have something neutral. They're calling every color neutral, and that's not actually possible. So the colors are a little bit difficult. I ended up getting CN08 Linen. I'm going to start putting it on. Shake it up first. When I shook it yesterday, I heard the sound of a ball. And this is a serum, so it's fairly thin, but I have used things that are thinner. Pull off the cap. When I first did it, I, <laughs> I did this. I don't know why. There's a pump, one pump, and you can see it's runny, but it's not that runny. You know what I mean? It's kind of like a La Mer, I would say. And when I tried this on in the store, I thought, this is super light, but let's see. I had a feeling when it set up, it might dry a little bit darker, and I think it does. And I've hardly used any. A little goes a long way. The coverage, they're saying, is medium to full, and the finish, they're saying, is natural. It it doesn't have a creamy feeling like many foundations do. And this is a teeny bit light, but we're going to give it some time. So I have a lot of redness and sun damage I want to cover. Some of my redness is just the way I am. Long time ago, Lisa Eldridge did a video, did makeup on her assistant and her assistant had some redness here and she said people who have redness in this area here it's just the way they are it's just their skin type it's hereditary so i have a combination of broken capillaries and some hereditary redness so i'm using fingers they say you can do this with fingers with a beauty blender, whatever floats your boat. And I'd say the coverage is pretty solid. So solid that you need to be very careful. I like a natural looking foundation, meaning I want coverage, but I don't want to look cakey. I think that's most of us, right? And it doesn't look cakey here but it's impossible to get a natural look, in my opinion, if your color is off, because people will just notice right away there's something wrong with the color. So this is a teeny, teeny bit too light. I think we can agree. So I think something in the one range instead of zero or two, and there were two things I was thinking about. For me, if you have the same skin tone as I do, maybe WN16 Buff, which is a warm, or CN, 18 cream white. Mm, we're going to let this set up for a few minutes and see how it darkens. And you can see that's one pump. I still have plenty left. I could probably run it down the neck if I wanted to, but I don't want to get this. I don't want to get um, foundation on this sweater. They don't say that this is transfer proof. 
I don't feel that I got the redness on this side very well taken care of. This side looks a little bit better. But, you know, the light in this room isn't even. So I'm going to be back in a few minutes and we're going to see how this has changed. It's been just a few minutes and I don't know that it's getting darker, to tell you the truth. But let's go with the concealer. And this is an alabaster, which I've got a feeling. I mean, I couldn't really test this. I did. But the truth is, when you're wearing a mask, you can't see how it's blending with your cheeks. And I kind of go in with the Beauty Blender straight, which is usually not what I do. This has a thick nature to it, kind of like the Laura Mercier Flawless Fusion. But at the end of the day, I feel like the Flawless Fusion is drying, so I'm not really wearing that anymore, even though it gives me good coverage. And I do feel like, actually, this color isn't bad with this foundation. The sun's coming back out. With this side, I'm going to use the brush. Now, I don't have equal darkness on both sides, but I would say I'm getting better coverage, oddly enough, with the Beauty Blender than I am with this one. Um, but it's starting to crease in the trough already. So I'm just going to use the brush to take off the excess right there. It's interesting. I don't know if this needs to be set or not. So I think what I'm going to do is set one side and leave the other side unset. You know, I'm always looking for the holy grail when it comes to concealer. And right now I'm just using the By Terry, not because it's giving me great coverage, but because it doesn't look drying. Sometimes you just have to pick your battles. It looks nice powdered, actually. I like the powdered look better than the unpowdered look. But, I don't know about the color. Did it change the color? I can't tell. We're going to leave it <laughs> because we're going to compare both sides. It's been a solid five, so it's time to try some other products. Let's start with the blush. We're going to start with a cream blush, and this is the mauve color, or mauve color. Now, I forget how I say it. And remember, my skin is really well moisturized today. And every day. So how things apply for you and what the finish looks like on you will differ. And okay, I'm going to confess. Yesterday when I bought this, I was wearing foundation. And I decided to put this on top of my foundation. And it was almost matte. So you probably can get a very close to matte look out of this. No problem. So, on this side of the face, I like it a little bit better. And I'll tell you why. Because I feel that this side of my face shows dehydration more than this side of the face. I am super hydrated. The last four days, at least, I have been drinking a liter and a half of water, which is my goal, but I go through days where I don't even come close to it. It rained the day before yesterday, so the air has humidity in it, my body has water in it, I'm hydrated, and yet, to me, it looks a little dehydrating. I'm not loving the way it looks right through here. Okay. And now I'm going to go in with a powder, and I'm going to do this one first. And I'm going to use this kind of as a contour blush. So I'm kind of doing a triangle like this, but getting it under here as well, because it's a little bit darker than the cream I just put on. And there's a nice sheen to these Seurats.
And that color was Trobique. It's a Surat. And I think that's quite nice. Let's see. Blended beautifully. These do blend beautifully, but I still see some pinkness in my skin right here that I don't really love. Let's... Oh, it's dried on my hand. Actually, that might make it a little bit easier. Let's uh, see how we can build. I like the idea of building with it after it's dried a little bit so it's not as liquidy and won't move around and I can be pretty specific. And yeah, it builds if you build it that way, I think pretty nicely. And let's do a little bronzer. And this is a very light color just to add a little definition to my face and warm things up since this color is a little too light for me. You guys, I don't know. I feel like it looks pretty. But I also feel like it has a lot to do with how I came to the table, which is super shiny and hydrated. Um, I think it looks really pretty. I have to say, I, there's a part of me that's wondering, really, is this just because this is how I came to the table? How I come to the table with all that shine is has a lot to do with what it looks like, but it doesn't, it doesn't look bad at all. And I do like that there's a lot of coverage. So I will come back in a couple of hours, but before I do, let's just hit a couple of things. One, <laughs> It was drying on me yesterday. It just was. If you pile on a lot of stuff, you can get it to not be drying and not look drying. However, it doesn't mean that it negates the drying ingredients in here. So if you have dry skin, I just wouldn't recommend this to you. You don't need the alcohol to nat. You don't need the salicylic acid. You don't need the other ingredients that I named in here. I don't think this is good for people with dry skin. If you have combo to oily skin, you might love this. I love the fact that the coverage is pretty decent and I didn't even have to use a full pump. While they're calling it a serum, it's not serum-y. It, it's really not. The colors are interesting. They could be challenging for some people to find something that works for them. They say that this is featherweight, and I don't feel the weight of the foundation on my skin, so if that's something that bothers you, the weight of things, I don't really feel the weight. I think it's okay. Okay, so I'm going to play around with eyeshadow for a minute, and I'll be back in a couple of hours, probably just two hours, and we'll see what's going on. All right, you guys, I am back. It is a couple of hours later, as promised. And I had my glasses on, so of course there's some rub off uh, to be expected. While I had the glasses on, I was also looking in my bigger X mirror, and I was seeing things I didn't like. In this one, which I think is a 4 or 5X, I still I'm seeing things I don't like. I mentioned earlier, I didn't like what was going on here. I still don't. And there's some accumulation in the fold here. I'm going to pull in right here around the nose. It doesn't look good. It looks like it's dry. It's uh, some collecting in the crevices of the nose. Right here, I don't like it either. The forehead looks fine, no problem. And, you know, basically, like, outside the fingers, so from here on, fine. But from here in, not so fine. Here are my conclusions. When I, I look at it in my little mirror here, which I need to adjust, I feel like, great, I'm, I'm two feet, arm's length away, it looks fine. And I'm also blind. It, it looks fine. There's, there's nothing wrong with it. It looks... It doesn't look like I'm not wearing foundation, you know, like that Shantakai, which I feel just it doesn't look like makeup. It does look like makeup, but it doesn't look makeup-y. My hands are so red. I'm freezing. <laughs> um, the finish I like, but the finish is all about what I had on my face before I sat down and put stuff on. 
so your finish will vary. My conclusions are just because of the ingredients. This is not something I would recommend for somebody who has dry skin. You don't need Danette alcohol. You do not need salicylic acid. And that other ingredient I mentioned that is good at congestion, uh, you know, clearing out congested skin. These are things that are very beneficial to people with congested skin, people with acne, people with oily skin. I would say if you have combo skin, take a look at it. If you have those other issues, take a look at it. If you have normal skin, if you moisturize well, maybe. But if you have older skin, your barrier is so important and there are things in here that can compromise your barrier. So if you're older but your skin is normal, I wouldn't. That's my personal thing. And by the way, the color, so the color's not bad, even though it's cool, it doesn't look as cool to me as my uh, La Mer, which is supposed to be neutral, but I feel that it's quite cool. So this one, I always get this weird feeling like, what is going on with this t color? And this one I don't. It, it is a cool, but it does read kind of neutral, this specific color. So let's take a look at the under eyes. So there's troughing, and there was troughing in the beginning. And I put powder in here, but it troughed a little bit anyway. But this is, you know, everything troughs here, almost everything. This side where I didn't put powder, there's a little bit of troughing. I like the powdered look more. I feel like I have more coverage on this side, which I mentioned before. I believe this is the side, yeah. But I also just like the look overall of this powdered. I kind of like this. Now, Kosas is something that I have felt. It's very nice. It's not drying. It's just a horrible color. They finally expanded their color range, and I will be getting it today, later on. So once I get this, I'm going to try the new color and then I might do a head-to-head -head between these two to see because I feel the Kosas has good coverage, this has good coverage, the Kosas isn't drying, this doesn't seem to be drying and it doesn't look drying and I'm, I'm kind of impressed with it. Powdered, unpowdered, this side, not impressed. So there you go, you guys. Those are my conclusions. This is a very possible yes. This is a no, partly because I have recently found something that I love so much. I don't see how anything can compare to it, partly because the color is wrong and partly because the ingredients that are in it, I know, even though I don't feel tight, I don't feel itchy, I know there are ingredients in here that I don't want on my skin. And that, my friends, is it. Thank you so much for spending some time with me. I hope it was helpful to you, and I hope you come back again. Oh, by the way, if you make it to the end, and I know most people don't, I am on Instagram now. I'm just posting outtakes from my thumbnails. So, you know, sometimes I pull my thumbnails from my talking, but sometimes I pose afterwards, you know, cheese. And the shots that I don't use in the thumbnail, I put up there so you just get some different looks and that's all I'm kind of doing. I'm not sure what else to do. A picture of some clouds. I might put up a picture of Lucy because many of you probably haven't met her. And yeah, I'm kind of experimenting with that. So come join me on Instagram. I am the underscore hooded underscore lid on Instagram. Okay. Until the next time, be safe and smart and I'm wishing you good health.